fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver, the Lone Ranger. In the early days of the Western United States, many innocent men were convicted by the primitive law courts of the New Territory. The masked rider of the plains fought the injustice of these courts just as courageously as he fought the outlaws and cattle rustlers who roamed the frontier. It was he, more than any other man, who preserved the true democratic principle that all men are equal before the law. Return with us now, those thrilling days when the West was young, and adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. As our story begins, Thaddeus Packard is struggling through a swamp, pushing aside the reeds and rushes that grow higher than his head. Thick ooze grips his ankles as he wades knee-deep in water. His face is thin and lined, and the pallor, unusual in the frontier country, speaks of many years in prison. Packard pushed on, not knowing that grim and terrible death in the form of quicksand lay ahead. His bloodshot eyes were burning with a pen of hatred, and he continually muttered the names of three men. Whitlock, Timmons, and Judson. I'll get them. Whitlock, Timmons, Judson. <coughs> Blasted swamp. They won't stop me. Nothing will stop me now. Ten years of waiting for Whitlock, Timmons, and Judson. Oh, no, Horsemen, after me again. But they can't get me now. <coughs> Go away. Leave me be. I ain't coming out. I ain't being took back. Stay where you are. Don't you come after me or I'll shoot. I'll shoot you. You're a fool. I'm coming after you. Come on, Silver. Get back, I tell you. You let me be or I'll get you. Come on, Silver. I'm throwing you a rope, stranger. Come out before you're in the quicksand. Let me alone. I, I'm i stuck. Go on, go on, Silver. I can't move my feet. The quicksand's got me. Stand still. Don't struggle. You're going to be all right. <laughs> A thin rope snaked out from the masked man's hand, and the coil settled over Packer's shoulders. Steady now. Don't try to struggle. Let me pull you out of there. Back, Silver. Back, boy. Come back. We have them all right, Tonto. You can't take me back. You can't do it. When we get on firm ground. Now you can wait again over this way. Let loose this rope. Let me alone now. Not just yet, stranger. I want to have a talk with you. But I won't be took back. I'm a free man. Take it easy, fellow. You're all right. Uh, uh, I I reckon you did save my life, mister. I didn't know there was quicksand there. You were going to shoot me, stranger. I don't see any gun. I ain't got none. That's what I thought. But you can't take me back to jail. You can't do it. I'm a free man now. I got a full pardon. You can't take me back. I don't want to take you back to jail. 
I just saw you were heading for that bog of quicksand and wanted to warn you, but you wouldn't listen. So, so you come in to get me, huh? Save my life for me in spite of my arguments. You need food and rest. You look as if you've traveled a long ways. I don't need nothing. I, I'll get along all right now. Just, just let me alone. I... Steady, fellow. I... Oh. You get him, Tonto. Uh... Let him sprawl on the ground, Tonto. He's just about exhausted. Oh, that's, that's right. Find some food for him, and I'll try and give him a drink of water. Drink this. It'll help. Whitlock, Timmons, Judson. I gotta get square. What's that? Whitlock. Timms, Judson. Tonto, did you hear those three names? Uh, you heard me. Here, fellow, drink some more water. I won't go back to jail. I, I won't. They, they can't make me. You're not going back to jail? Uh, my, my no name. one but Thaddeus Packard would be out to get Whitlock, Timmons, and Judson. But how ten years have changed him. Why, he's an old man now. Uh, you, you got some food there, huh? Yes. Try to eat a little something while we fix up some hot broth for you. Yes, I... You, you don't aim to jail me again? Of course not. You should never have been jailed in the first place, Thad Packard. Hey, you... You know me? I've heard about you. They... They frame me. <coughs> I never stole a dime in my life. I, I wasn't guilty of that robbery. I didn't think you were. After I heard all the details, I was sure you'd been framed. I... I was. But you confessed to the robbery. Those three snakes. They told me. They told me if I'd confess, they'd pay me handsome. They'd pay me well. And gave me their word they'd see I didn't go to jail. They wanted you to confess the robbery to save their own worthless hides. Yeah. That's what they done. Then after I'd confessed to stealing the cash, they left me alone. Turned on me. Railroaded me to jail. I've been there... Ten years. Ten years of my life. But now, now I'll get square. I'll get all three of them. And go right back to jail? Well, what's there to live for now? Likely my wife won't want me back no more. My daughter, she was only a couple years old when they took me away. She won't even know her pa. All I got to live for is to see them three pay up in full. Whitlock, Timmons, and Judson... And stranger, they'll pay. Two days' journey from the quicksand bog, the wife and daughter of Thad Packard lived in a small cottage. The girl knew little about her father, and he was rarely mentioned in the house. But one night, banker Whitlock called on Mrs. Packard, and the following morning, Sally said... Mama, I wasn't asleep last night when Banker Whitlock was calling. Well, Sally, I thought you were. No, I couldn't sleep somehow. And I heard Mr. Whitlock talking. What about it, Sally? You were talking about my father. Oh. Yes, honey. I I guess that's about the first time in ten years he's been mentioned in my house. I, I vowed never again to think or speak about him. Wish I'd known him. Mama, was he really as bad as, as Mr. Whitlock was saying? Yes, dear. He wasn't a good man. He stole money from the bank. Did he really shoot a man? Yes. Why, dear? Oh, I don't know. I suppose I ought to feel the same as you do about him. I ought to hate him. You mustn't hate anyone, Sally. When we, we make a mistake about a person and find they aren't the sort of man they seemed at first to be, the only thing we can do is just forget them. Try to forget them. Drive him out of our minds. But I don't see how you could make such a mistake. Now, Sally, don't think any more about it. Well, if I love someone, I'd love him. Don't seem that you could care so much about him if he was as bad, as bad as Banker Whitlock was saying last night. Well, you're young, honey. You'll understand that sort of thing when you grow up. Mm-hmm. Mama? Yes, dear? You think a lot of Mr. Whitlock, don't you? Sally, what makes you say such things? Well, don't you? He's a fine, upstanding man. He felt terribly bad when your father turned out to be dishonest. He's been good to us ever since. Oh, I don't know what I'd have done if he hadn't made it possible for me to work a little and earn enough to support us. Oh, gee. <laughs> What's the matter, dear? Oh, I suppose I'll have to like him then. Don't you like him? No, I don't. Why, Sally, 
What's Mr. Whitlock ever done to you? I just don't like him, that's all. He said that Pa was out of jail now. Yes. And that he'd likely be coming back here to see me. And that if you said so, he'd have the sheriff drive him out of town before he could get to the house. Sally, I... I told Mr. Whitlock that I never wanted to see Thad Packett again. There's no longer a place for him in our lives. I suppose you know best, Mommy. Now, don't you think any more about it. There's too many nice things to think about. Even if you don't want to see Pa anymore... He was a lot nicer-looking man than Mr. Whitlock. Nicer than Mr. Timmons or Mr. Judson, too. Sally, how do you know what he looked like? Why, I found a picture of him. This one. That old tin type. That's you and him, isn't it? Yes. We... We were so happy then. But it mustn't be here. Give it to me, Sally. But, Mama, I... I have pictures of him in this house. Ten years, I... I thought... Thought I'd forgotten him. But, Mama... Now, dear, it's time he did you study him. You leave that picture with me and go to the other room. You must study so you'll grow up to be a smart woman. Go now. Yes, sir. Um... Oh. Oh. I mustn't think of him. Mustn't let myself. He was a thief. He confessed to it. Nothing but a thief. I, I won't throw this out, though. Put it here neath the shelf. Oh, boy. Oh, there's no Please don't be afraid of me. What do you want? Who are you? I want to speak to you about your husband, Mrs. Packard. About my husband? Yes. There's nothing to be said about him. I lost my husband ten years ago. No, you didn't. I want you to hear Why about... Why did you come here anyway? Who are you? Why are you masked? Your husband has just been released from prison. He's paid his debt as the law demanded. I never want to see him again. If he sent you to me, just tell him that. I never want to see him again. He's a thief. He... Might as well have been a murderer. He was convicted of a crime, but perhaps he wasn't guilty. Of course he was guilty. He had a fair trial. Has the money ever been found? The money he's supposed to have stolen? No, they, they couldn't make him tell where it was. After he was sentenced to prison, he didn't admit stealing the money, did he? No. He confessed it before the trial, though, and that's why he was convicted. What did he say afterwards? He tried to lie out of it. He said that Mr. Whitlock, the banker, was a crook. and said that Mr. Timmons and Mr. Judson, both witnesses, were crooks as well. Stands the reason everyone can't be crooked. What else did he say? He swore he'd get square. But he hadn't better come around here. The men won't let him in town. If he shows his face here, they'll drive him out. Mister, do you know my father? Yes, Sally. I know him. Oh, tell me about him. Is he as bad as folks say? Or as nice as his pictures look? Sally, you go at once and call Clem. Tell him to come here and drive this man from the house. Tell him to hurry. All right, Mama. Clem? Hey, Clem, where are you? I'm not finished, Mrs. Packard. You better go before Clem comes. He'll shoot you. What was the evidence against your husband? There must have been a lot of it. There was. There was evidence aplenty. Yes? Two men, Judson and Timmons, saw him stealing from the bank. They saw the guard there try to stop him and saw the shot. And they identified him? Yes. What about the guard? But he, he wasn't sure who it was. He didn't get a fair look at him. But Mr. Judson and Mr. Timmons did. And Mr. Whitlock suspected Thad Packard from the start. Why did he suspect him? Because, well, it seems Packard owed money to him. Now, will you go before there's a fight? We're a coming, ma'am. I got others with me. Mr. Timmons, Mrs. Judson, what are you doing here? We're well, just a coming to see you, ma'am. You keep your hands up, stranger. Ask him. You'd better get and be quick about it, or we'll arrest you. You must be named Timmons. So he is. Uh, that's my name. And you, Henry Judson. I am. That's what I thought from the way you'd been described. Uh, you'd better leave, stranger, before the law is called in to arrest you. I hope to have a look at you two. I'd like to see Whitlock as well. Who is he, Mrs. Packard? What's he doing here? He... I'm Thad Packard's friend. <laughs> Packard. Does that mean anything to you? Another crook like Packard. Master that. Will you tell Packard to keep a plenty distance from here? He won't do that. He's coming back here to see you two. Wh what for? He has some unfinished business with you. I'll tell him I saw you. You tell Packard he'll be tarred and feathered if he comes back here. Now, you tell him that. He'll be carried out of town on a rail. That masked man threatened us. Claim he should be jailed. What do you mean by Thad's unfinished business? Mother, mother, do you know I like that masked man? I feel like we could trust him in spite of the mask. A friend of Packard's and Mast, a thieves' companion. I still like him. Before the next exciting scenes of our Lone Ranger story, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. On the evening of the day that the Lone Ranger appeared at Mrs. Packard's home, Whitlock's friends, Abe Timmons and Hank Judson, were seated with the banker in the latter's living room. Timmons said, I've got to have another drink. That's what I need, another drink. Have your drink then, Timmons. We must arrive at some decision. Why must we, Judson? What's that, Whitlock? I say, why must we arrive at some decision? I've told you both that Packard can't prove a thing against us. We don't have a thing to be afraid of. If it was just Packard, I wouldn't be afeard. It ain't that dim witted idiot that bothers me. Nothing he could do would make trouble. Well, then, why this meeting? It's that masked man. I tell you, Whitlock, his eyes met mine square. I never seen eyes like his'n. He was gleaming from behind his mask, cold and steely, and seeming to go clean through me. Well, Clem drawed a gun on him. He didn't pay the slightest speck of heed to it. Just didn't bother to look at it. I'm not concerned about it. There ain't any way on earth that Packard or the masked man can prove anything against us. And besides, gentlemen, uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Packard thinks right well of me. You've been mighty good to her, Woodlock. She's a right handsome woman. Maybe if something happens to Packard so she's free of him, we might get married. Always looking for your own welfare, ain't you, Whitlock? Why not? Mrs. Packard will side with us if Packard comes around and starts talking. Yeah, I'd feel a heap better if Packard was dead. Hmm, perhaps that's an idea. There could be an accident. There might be. Who's that? Who's that at the door? Take it easy, Timmons. What are you so scared for? I'll see who it is. Probably one of the men to tell me the Packard's finally arrived in town. I'm going to have another drink. I need it. Well, what is it? I'm busy this morning. I want you, Whitlock. It's Packard. Packard, look at him. You're coming with me. Let go of me, Judson Timmons. Let's go. Stop him. Let Packard, me go, boys. Back. Help me. Make him, make him, let me go. The rest of you, stay hey, with you the door. Stay back. This is abduction. Call it what you like. There's a redskin here, too. Help this so long. Oh, 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 be worked my way now. Don't the first man to open this door may stop lead. Judson. Judson, did you see it? They got Whitlock. Open the door. Go for help. You'll go yourself. I ain't risking my neck. Judson. Judson, what's it mean? What's it mean? Are they coming back for us? You better stop drinking, Timmons. I can't. I'm scared. Did you see him? Did you see Packard's face? Them eyes way back deep in his face. Dark rim, his cheeks sunk. He looked like death, Judson. Dead. Dead for all of us. Stop it. <laughs> but I... Whimpering like a kicked yellow dog won't help matters. Packard's shown us his hand now. He's shown what his plans are. He's going to try and get us that way. Well, now we know all we have to do is see the sheriff. Look. What the... An arrow... It come clean through the window. I saw it. It, it most struck me. It wasn't aimed at you. There's a note fastened to it. I'll see what it says. Probably a message telling us what to do to get Whitlock back. Hurry. See what it says. What's it say, Judson? Hmm. So that's his scheme. What is it? Listen to this. It says, confess the truth or meet the same fate as Whitlock. The same fate? The same fate? That means he's dead. Oh, what do we do? What do we do, Judson? Well, there's more here. Judson has one hour, unless he confesses in the meantime. One hour? That means you're next. Does it mention me? No, it doesn't say anything about you. Good, good. But you're the next. One hour, huh? All right, that makes it easy. <laughs> the fool. By before the hour is up, we'll have a guard here who'll keep an army away. A guard, that's it, a guard. Why, this is just what we want. This puts Packard right in our hands. Yes, sure. He's the same as confessed to killing Whitlock. That means he'll hang. It means he's going right back to the hands of the law. Come on, we'll go with there. Lots of men ready to grab him. All right, all right. Let's get started. About an hour later, Timmons and Judson sat in the cafe. Their table was in a corner beneath the window, but they felt quite safe from another attack that might result in the capture of Judson next on Packard's list. No one noticed a tall stranger who sat alone near the door. We're safe enough here, Timmons. What, what time is it now? The hour's about up. I'm not worried. Here comes Clem. Well, I reckon you ain't nothing to fear, Mr. Judson. Uh, I'm not afraid of what a man like Packard can do. I'm only afraid he won't show up. Uh, I just hope he does. We'll be ready for him. I spoke to the sheriff, and he's ready with plenty of lawmen. See him over by the bar? Yep. I, I wish it was over, though. I wouldn't get a night's rest till Packard's catched and strung up for Whitlock's murder. We'll get him, Timmons. Well, the hour's up, Judson, and there ain't a thing happened. Oh, I tell you. Stand where you are. That's what? stranger for the door. Look at the mask. What's this? Put down them guns, stranger. On your feet. You, Judson Timmons, stand up. Oh, mistakes of life. Do what he says. He can't shoot his way past the lawman. Careful, let him get you. That's it. Back against the wall, Judson. You can't shoot me down like this. Get back against the wall. I am. This is a personal matter. 
Don't anyone try to interfere. Timmons, you're the next. You have just one hour in which to confess. No, no, no. Mr. So what? He knows. No, no, no. Look, look at that window. A reskin. He's got a hold of Judson. Don't slap, brother. Put me down. Make him drop me. Drag him out, Tuttle. Oh, he got him. He's dragging me away. Stand where you are. Make a move and I'll start shooting. Look at here, mister. You ain't going to get away with this. Simmons knows what he got away with. For ten years, he's been a free man. Now she here. But you're I... living your last hour, Timmons. You're the next on Packard's list. The only way to save your worthless hide is to talk. Confess. Tell everything. What's to happen to Judson? The same has happened to Whitlock. The same as will happen to you unless you talk. I'm leaving here and warning all of you not to try and come through the door after me. Get him! Stop it! Shoot him! Get after him! Get that door open! Open the door! Let me get a shot! Shoot! He's getting away! Get him! Drop him! Where's the law? What's the matter with you? He's got away. Doggone it, Timmons. Who'd ever suspicion that he'd have that redskin grab Judson through the window? You got to protect me. You got to do it. You can't let him get me like that. Gosh, we thought we was protecting Judson. But we sure enough didn't. What she wants you to confess, Timmons? Nothing. I don't know what he was talking about. It's Packard's scheme to get even with us for sending him to jail. You won't dare try to come like that again. Gosh, I wonder how he'll get you. He won't. He can't. You got to guard me. You got to protect me. You got to protect me. You got to protect me. Another hour went by, while Timmons grew increasingly nervous. The liquor he drank seemed to have no effect on him. He sat pale-faced and tense in a small room at the rear of the cafe. Clem was with him, sitting at a table with eyes fixed on the clock. It's getting to the end of the hour, Timmons. I don't know, but you do well to confess. If there's anything that you can confess. Oh, no, there isn't. I ain't done nothing. No? I, I don't see how that masked man can get me here. Do you? I don't know. He sure has ways about doing things. What do you mean? Uh, I wouldn't like to be in your shoes. There's a dozen ways he could get you. I don't see how. Well, I don't either, but he... Look out! Uh, stand back! Let me get that grip. What is it? What is it? What's the matter? I just happened to see it in time. That spider was dropping down right on your neck. Spider? A poison one at that. Gosh, maybe that's the way Whitlock and Judson was done for it's awful being bit by a pies and spider. It, it ain't human. You can't do that sort of thing. Time ain't up yet. May as well sit down again. I don't know what else I could do. There ain't nothing else. We beat him, Clem. You seen that spider? Well, there's nothing to fear, is there? Hour ain't up yet. But what else is there? Duck! That was a close one, Timmons. That arrow didn't miss you by two inches. I, I can't stand no more. I'll tell all I can. Why shouldn't I? I didn't have no part in it. It was them other two. Don't let Packard get me. What are you talking about, Timmons? Whitlock and Judson. It was Whitlock's scheme from the start. It was? Tell the sheriff I'll talk. I'll tell her what I know about it. Hey, sheriff, come here a second. Why, what's happened, Clem? Sheriff, don't let Packard get me. I'm ready to talk. Whitlock stole the money from the bank. He stole a lot of cash. He and Judson planned it all. I owed him cash, and they made me swear I seen Packard robbing the bank. You and Judson both swore. We had to. Whitlock made us. It was Whitlock that planned it, him and Judson. What about the guard that was shot? Whitlock shot him. He shot him his own self. Then he told Packard that we all told Packard that if he'd admit to stealing, we'd pay him handsome for it. Somebody had to be blamed for it. Packard needed the cash bad, so he agreed. Go on, Timmons. The hour's up. I'm confessing. I didn't have much to do with it. After Packard confessed, Whitlock let him go to jail. He broke his promise. He promised Packard he'd go free, but he busted his word. He let him get jailed. And you claim you didn't have much to do with it? I didn't. I, I swear it. That's all we need to have. Touch him in, boys. Uh, Take uh, 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 Whitlock. Judson. You weak need yellow rats squealed, eh? You ain't dead? No, we ain't dead. Squealer, trying to blame it on us. Well, you was in it as deep as we was. Boys, does that clear me? It sure does, Packer. <laughs> Slicker scheme I ever took part in. A put-up job. The whole thing was free. <laughs> Reckon it was, Timmons. Something had to be done to trap you. So me and the sheriff agreed to work along with the masked man and see what had happened. Packard, you'd better get for home. The masked man is there right now, sort of explaining things to your folks. <laughs> Come on, Packard. We'll give you a rip snorting escort to your house. We'll... Come on, boys. <laughs> Let's make it up to Packard for what he's been through. Get these three snakes on a rail and ride them along to Packard's house. The 
men made a celebration at Thad Packard's return. Torchlights flamed to light the procession, and three scapegoats with their hands tied rode on rails as almost every man in town went to the little home of Packard's wife and daughter. There's your place, Packard. Go on inside. I, I don't know if I should go in or not. Go on, I tell you. Mary said never to speak to her again. I, I don't know if It's she... all right. The Lone Ranger told her about things. Oh, he ain't doggone it all. Quiet down now, boys. Mary, my wife. Sally, I wonder... Fed. Mary, I... Oh, Fed. Fed, I've heard the whole story. You poor, poor darling. Come in. You... You want me here now? Oh, Fed. For ten years I've been trying not to want you, thinking you were dishonest. And all the time my heart's been crying for you. I... I guess I just about stopped living when you went away. So did I. If it hadn't been that I wanted revenge, I don't know as I'd have lived through it. The Lone Ranger found me. He believed in and me. so did Sally. She believed in you too, I guess. Thank heaven for that. But, Thad, you're back. Now we can live again. Mama, Mama, what were all those men outside cheering for? Sally, come here, dear. Your father's come home. Father. Sally. Oh. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.